what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the sand and right now. I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. All right, Dr. Jeremy Weiss here with here at IRCE with InspiredInsider.com, and I'm here with Amit Bivas. He is the head of marketing for Optimov. So, first of all, tell me how this company started. I know there's a good story behind it. It's actually a very interesting story. So we started around 2009, and up until a year ago, we bootstrapped, meaning no external funding. Uh, we started as a company which uh, provided services consulting around data, data-driven consulting. So two founders of the company, one was doing his master's in, uh, in, in, in operational research, the other one was a PhD in machine learning. They came up with this model on how to segment customers and predict their future behavior. And so they applied that model, taking data from different retailers in Tel Aviv, Israel, and provided consultancy, marketing consultancy, consulting based on that. And then, um, with the money, with the, with a margin, with a margin, with the profit that they've done, they invested into building the software. Technology. Exactly. And 2011, the technology was already there, and we we pivoted, and then the company was started to to be called Optimove, which is the name of the, the product itself. And around 2011, we were already almost 90% income from product uh, licensing fees. Uh, up until uh, a year ago, pretty much, uh, we were self-funded, 130 empl- 120 employees back in the day, and then we received uh, growth funding for, uh, we, received, we took $20 million uh, growth funding, and the reason that we did that was because we were seeing that we're starting to compete against the bigger guys, so we needed some more armor, you know? Um, so yeah, that's in a nutshell the, the interesting story. I think that there aren't a lot of companies out there that were able to bootstrap up until that stage. So we take a lot of pride in that. What were some of those, because you've been with them for a long time early on, what were some of those findings that you were discovering before you actually put it uh, technology behind it? So I think that from the, from the get-go, um, the idea was to build a software because the idea was that it's very hard to scale services business. So in order, very hard, very hard up until like impossible, no, not impossible, but you know, it's very hard. And the way to scale that is to is to, to bake it into a software and have a SaaS offering. So that's pretty much what we did from from service to product. Um, and the findings were, I mean, what we did is we just baked that model into a product, so we'd be able to scale it. And then once the once the product was there, so we started to um, you know continue and, and, and develop it in order to to provide better answers to the need of marketers to communicate better with their customers. So it started with that model and how to segment your customers and predict their future tendencies, and then it develop we continued developing it to a way of campaign management. So not only you have that insight, you can take action on it. And today, I mean, we came to a place, to a place where, you know, we have AI layers on top of it, a lot of recommendations engines, where our, you know, big promises, so I'll take a step back and give you a little story about, you know, yeah. um, marketers, all right? They were born Don Drapers. And 1990s, email started to be a marketing channel and digital was born as, as a marketing channel. and those Don Drapers pivoted and needed to become Einsteins. And it's not the marketer's natural place. So what we're aiming to do nowadays is to push marketers back to be Don Drapers and Optimum will take care of all the science and automation. So you be that creative maniac, pardon my, my French, and we'll take care of making sure what works, what doesn't work, and we'll shorten the cycle of ideation to execution. Right? So the marketer could be that creative guru and we'll take care of all the rest. We'll make sure that, that the right message is served to the right client at the right time. Yeah. So that's where we're at today. Um, so walk me through a, a use case like, and where Optimove comes in. So someone, like a company using it, they hit the site, what happens? So just to give context, yeah. so we're a middleware. We sit between 
the database, and the execution channels. Yeah. So who's the ideal customer? The ideal customer is any customer-centric business, direct-to-consumer, um, mid, mid, mid to enterprise size. They need to have a bunch of clients and a bunch of, of, of offerings. So in a way, Optimove would do that mix and match of the right offering to the right customer at the right time. So that's, you know, in a helicopter view. Yeah. Um, bringing it down to the surface, so we connect the databases with the marketing, com with the marketing channels with the idea of, of orchestrating them. So for instance, one of our clients is uh, Freshly. Um, they're disruptive in, the, in, the, in, the, in their space. And what they do is um, they fight churn very aggressively with Optimove. So they're, they're able to predict churn and, and, and customer affinities and cater them with the right messaging in order to A, encourage repeat business and B, preventing them from, from moving to the competition. Yeah. Um, so in that case, it helps them reduce their churn, exactly. right? So how does it do that? Um, once again, sending the right offering, which re-engages the customer, understanding what works and what doesn't work, and and you know automating the stuff that works, and for the stuff that doesn't work, you know refining up until it does work. So it's a lot of like um, testing, a lot of you know fine tuning, and we also have the AI layer, which is is, is called like self-optimizing campaigns. So traditionally, there is an A/B test, right? A wins, B loses, everyone get it, gets A. What we say is that, hey, don't kill B. There are sub-segments that prefer B, and there are sub-segments that prefer A, and there will be sub-segments that prefer C. So find what resonates with each sub-segment and serve them with the best offering. So it sort of learns what certain types, just from behavior of them on the site, or what they're clicking on or what they're looking at? Is that how it realizes what to serve people, like so, off of the behavior? So that's a great, great question. So we segment the customers first and foremost down to micro segments based on their life cycle stages, based on their behaviors, based on what they clicked, what they looked at. And then when we send out the campaign, we test it on, this, on, the, on the micro segment resolution. And based on those, we understand what works best. So those sub segments are based on micro segments. So this micro segment responds better to A, this micro segment responds better to B, and then they'll get A or B. And important to say that these micro segments are, are dynamic. So today could be in micro segment, um, X tomorrow in micro segment Y. So customers change, changing. exactly, customer changes, they get the relevant offering was when they change, and it's all a dynamic phase. What we tend to say is, you know, I, I spoke about it earlier that ideation to execution for marketers is a nightmare. You think about a campaign, you think about a segment, and until you execute, it's a month. And then the whole game has changed. So when you shorten that cycle, so you're much more agile, you're able, you're able to, to move at the speed of your customers. And today, I think the, the competitive environment where, where we're at, it's crucial. Because think about you know, the, the, the modern age consumer. They don't mind who you are, what you do. If you're not relevant, bye-bye, you're out. So we need to be you know, at that speed of the customer in order to keep him engaged, him or her engaged. Yeah. So what has been I mean, your, one of your favorite customer success stories? Um, well, it's a, it's a tough question. There's a lot of success stories um, out there. Um, I don't have one favorite. I think that you know, since what our software does is every each and every campaign that's sent out is sent as is, is sent as a as a scientific experiment, test control. So we always test enhanced like how the how a certain segment behaves post uh, receiving a certain campaign versus what would happen with that segment organically. So we're able to show ROI directly. You see what's the marginal uplift a certain campaign brought you, and you're always trying to outperform that. So all of our clients are seeing um, the money, how much they make out of it. So I think that um, as a company, we're, we're, we're proud at you know, having negative churn. Our customers don't leave us. They stay with us for a long while because they see the money. Also, like there's, there's the screen of the campaign management side of Optimove. There's a lot of like squares with money in it because we're actually able to show, so we don't measure on clicks or opens or, or all that stuff. We measure uplift, we measure money, how much extra money you made. So once the marketer or once the business side see those numbers, I mean, it just makes sense. Um, so I don't think there's like a specific uh, success story that, you know. Is there a customer that you're especially proud of that like, you know, wow, we landed this, uh, this customer? Yeah, so actually that's it's a, it's a great question. So recently we landed uh, Stitch Fix. And Stitch Fix are well known. I mean, they're emerging in this. They're well known for doing everything science first, and they're very advanced in their analytics and, and, and the way that they're uh, that they're crunching the data and and, and you know um, 
their whole approach to data is very, very unique and very, very um, advanced. So they chose us as you know, their partner of choice, and we take a lot of pride in that because you know, they select their partners very, very, you know, pinpick them, and you know, them taking us on board and us starting to work with them is for us you know, a huge success. We work today with over 250 brands, and I think that them specifically, it's like um, we take pride of them being a client. When someone brings you on, how long does it take to onboard into their, integrate it into their uh, system or site? So that's, that's a great question. Um, we're very dependent on data. So as I said, we're a middleware, middleware sorry, sitting between the databases and the communication channels. So com connecting to the databases is a process that takes somewhere between three to five weeks um, and we yeah, take... It's, it's very technical. I'm sure it's got to integrate with whatever they have going on. Yeah, so it's not a nightmare. There are, you know, heavier integrations which take, which take months over years sometimes. Um, so it's not a plug and play solution. It is, you know, a few weeks of integration where our data scientists will plug, will plug into the databases, start extracting the data, cleanse them, dedupe them, and then create a data mart, a single customer view, where we apply all the data science on top of that. And then also each and every um, product environment is, is a, the model is a bit different for each and every client. So our data scientists design, um, it's the same master model, but they fine tune it to fit the business uh, environment of that client. So that also takes uh, uh, some time and it's a mutual process because the business side of our client would speak with our data scientists and until they're both, both sides are happy with, so we bring the best practice, but they bring their business understanding. So we find the middle where, where everything works for all the sides and then we launch the product. So that typically is a few, is between three to five to six weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, this has been great. So thank you. Where should we point people towards? Where should they check out more to, to find you? So our website, Optimove.com, um, you have more than, uh, than a lot of information there. Um, yeah, and then... Yeah, I have one last question, I mean, so this is great. Everyone should check out Optimove.com. But so tell me about the, my last question is interesting because you're international. Your company is based in Israel, right? And you have a New York office also. Um, what do you see the differences between doing the business, uh, the startup entrepreneur community in Israel and the US? That's, uh, that's a wonderful question. Um, so the company started in Tel Aviv, um, all, and, and then about a year ago, we relocated our CEO to, the, to, to New York to head the office there. It's a 15-person office there, and we also have an office in London, also a 10-person office, mostly salespeople. And there's a huge challenge because of the um, cultural differences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference? What are the differences you see uh, from, we're talking from Israel to the U.S., right? So, if, if, if anyone met in Israel, you know how crass we are in that sense and how straightforward and direct. Straightforward and direct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, straightforward and direct. And um, Americans don't necessarily understand that. They, 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 they consider it as being rude. While it's definitely not rude, it's just us being Mediterraneans. That's, you know, Middle East. That's, you know, high, that's our temper. And we need to like tone down sometimes when speaking with Americans. So I think that, you know, there's, there's a famous story about Intel that all of their, um, their staff that works with Israelis, they give them like, a, you know, they guide them on a how, debriefing, a, a, a debriefing about how to, you know, how to talk with these creatures because they're different. <laughs> so, so yeah, definitely it's, 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 it, there, it's a big culture difference and we're working on it on a day to day basis, how to, you know, Tone, our, tone ourselves down in order to, you know, to be able to, um, and, and obviously we have a lot of American employees now in our U.S. office, so, you know, it's also managing employees, it's, it's different. So we're now, you know, um, struggling with, you know, bridging those gaps, but I think we're doing a good job. Yeah. Thank you, Amit. There's so much more we could talk about with this. This is great. Live from IRCE. Check out Optimove.com. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the 